In this next practical application of freestyle rendering, I want to show you how to achieve a blueprint type visual style. As you can imagine, this looks really good with vehicles, but uh, really any hard surface object like this uh, sci-fi weapon looks pretty cool as a blueprint. So let's uh, take a look at our scene, um, which is the simplest scene that we'll use because um, for a blueprint, we don't need any lights and we also don't need any material quality on the object that we're rendering because our final result is only lines. But if I were to render now, of course, it would just be black because there's nothing illuminating the scene. So uh, let's do a little setup with the world. I'll create a new one and then the horizon color. Let's change that to a blue uh, like you would have on technical drawing blueprint paper. Something like that and uh, perhaps a little desaturated. Yeah, that should work pretty well. And now we need to tell the render engine to uh, uh, render the sky color instead of a transparent background. So under the shading tab, let's change alpha from transparent to sky. And if we render, we get a silhouette of our weapon on a blue background. So now let's cut out the weapon. The way we can do that is uh, I'll select a piece and create a material for that piece. And I'll call it holdout because it uh, works similarly to the idea of the cycles holdout shader. And uh, I'm going to enable shadeless so that it takes the minimum amount of calculation. And then uh, under transparency, let's enable that. And as far as type, it can be either mask or Z transparency, just not ray trace because then we'll start to get refractions. So as long as it's mask or Z transparency, turn the alpha to zero. And now let's render that. And that piece is now missing. But the key is that freestyle will still recognize the geometry and uh, draw lines on the edge types that we tell it to. So uh, let's select all our geometry now, making sure that the piece that we have the material is active and hit control L to link materials. That way um, no geometry will be visible or rather there will be no material quality, just the background. And then we can enable freestyle in our render settings, go all the way to the bottom, turn it on, jump over to our render layers and add a freestyle line set, leave the defaults and let's do a render. As you can see, our lines still render regardless of the materials transparency, uh, but black lines are not very blueprint like. Let's uh, switch the line style color to be white. And let's go back up to our line set because uh, for this visual style, I'm going to use several different line sets to achieve it. And this first one will just be an outline of our weapon as a whole. So I'll call this outline and our selection by types, visibility edge types and image border. Uh, those are the defaults and those are fine, but we don't need silhouette border or crease. We simply need external contour. That looks good. That's what I want. Uh, but let's increase the thickness from three. Let's double it to six. Very good. That's pretty much it for the outline. Now let's uh, add another line set, but um, go back to the first one. And in this drop down arrow, we have a copy line set. And now let's click on the second one, go back to that same drop down arrow and paste the line set to duplicate our settings and also share the line style. We can see we have two users here. So let's rename this second one and call it major because uh, I'm going to try and narrow down our major edges and creases throughout the geometry. And then before I start changing any settings, which will affect the original outline line set, I'm going to hit the plus button on our line style to make this unique uh, by duplicating it. And let's rename these properly. I'll call it style major. And then uh, for the outline, let's call it style outline. And then go back to major and we won't be using external contour for our edge types. Let's instead start going through these one by one I think probably silhouette will be used. Yeah, those lines are good to include uh, as a part of our major edges, um, though the thickness is still at six. Let's change that to a value of one. And then let's look down our edge type list, border. I think that's unnecessary. Let's try contour. Yeah, those thin lines look much better, but um, perhaps I can use two instead of one. And then uh, I also need to see what change contour brought. So let's switch to slot number two, disable contour and render again. And uh, we can see our lines get a little bit thicker. And uh, yeah, I like what contour adds to the uh, line detection. So let's keep that turned on. 
And something else that I'm noticing is uh, by default, all of our strokes are drawn in the center of our geometry as defined here in the thickness settings. So for our outline, let's try rendering that on the outside of my geometry. That way um, I don't have a thick line with a thinner line um, in the middle coming out of the same direction. That looks a little bit uh, weird to me. So let's try with the outside. Okay, um, I think it looks better overall. The only problem is in the interior angles. We can see that the thickness overlaps with each other and creates uh, sharp points. So that is um, a bit of a problem. Let's see if I can't fix that with an along the stroke modifier. Instead of linear, let's choose curve mapping and add a point in the middle. Click on the wrench to make this point a vector handle so that we still get a linear interpolation between our points. And what I want to do is shave down the ends of our strokes so that we lose these harsh points. So let's test that. And that's not what I was expecting because I forgot to change this max value here from 1 to 6. And that's helping a little bit, but ultimately more problems are being introduced. So I'm going to forget about rendering my lines on the outside of the geometry and just go back to the center and disable this modifier. It looked better before I tried to uh, get a little fancy with it. And uh, let's return to the major line set and continue um, figuring out which edge types we want to include. Let's try suggestive contour next. And that's actually kind of cool, um, but uh, I'm just gonna keep that in the back of my mind to potentially use. It's not exactly what I'm looking for, but it certainly does look pretty cool. So yeah, I'll remember that one. And now try Ridge and Valley. Another interesting one, but um, it's still not what I'm looking for as far as defining the major edges. Uh, I'm really not sure what this is looking at and how it's drawing the edges. But um, still, something to keep in mind like suggestive contours. But I think creasing is how I'm going to determine the right lines. So let's enable that. And then as far as the creasing angle, let's start out at, let's say, 150. Yeah, now we're finally getting somewhere. Major edges are starting to show up. Um, how about we increase the angle to 160 and see what that does for us. Switch to a new slot so we can um, switch in between. Yeah, that's definitely dialing in the major edges that I'm looking for. But we do see a problem, and that's with the bars here. Because at an angle of 160, we're starting to see the wireframe. And that's kind of ruining the blueprint illusion. But as far as the rest of the weapon, I actually want to increase this to 170 to see if I can grab a little bit more edge quality. So let's turn that up. Uh, keeping in mind that I'm going to want to exclude the bars from this line set. But uh, let's do another render. Yeah, that's definitely what I want uh, for the major edges. They're being defined pretty well. We're getting a little bit of the wireframe up here in the handle because this is probably the smoothest part of the weapon besides the um, bars. But uh, it's still subtle enough to where it just kind of looks like additional shading, like hatching or something, instead of being a full-out wireframe uh, like it shows on our bars. So uh, I like that value for creasing. And uh, are there any other edge types that might help? Uh, no, I don't think so. All that's left to do is exclude the bars. So uh, in our 3D viewport, let's select all my bar objects, hit Control g to group it, T to bring back my tool panel, and let's rename this bars, or actually it was already named bars. And now if I enable the group selection by toggle, I can choose that group and change it from inclusive to be exclusive. There we go. Our bars are no longer taken into account in this major line set. Although uh, after looking at this a few times, maybe a thickness of two is a little much. Let's go down to one and see if that gives us a better distinction between our outline and major edges. Very cool. Um, but I don't want to leave my bars without any lines at all. I just need to create a new line set for the bars specifically. 
So let's uh, copy my major line set, add a new one, paste the line set, and call it major bars. And since this is a duplicate, all I need to do is disable crease and make my bars group inclusive instead of exclusive. There we go, bars are back with lines. They just don't have the wireframe drawn, so that's perfect. And uh, I'm pretty satisfied with this blueprint style. But um, if you remember, I wanted to keep in mind the suggestive contour and ridge and valley edge types so that um, I can use them now for a little additional texture. So just to have fun with that, I'm going to add another line set and paste again our copied line set. And I'll call this texture. And before I change anything, add another uh, style to this by duplicating it and calling it style texture. And the idea behind the texture is I want it to be uh, much more subtle than our other lines. So we'll change the thickness to 0.5 and also change our alpha to 0.5 and then enable suggestive contour first by itself, disable our group selection by option, and see what that does for us. And hopefully you can see why I'm calling it texture because it's very subtle, but we have all these seemingly random lines that, um, you know, especially down here in the magazine, sort of re-emphasize the shape of the major lines and just kind of adds a cool feel to it. So yeah, I kind of like that, but um, let's see what it looks like with ridge and valley instead. Yeah, in a different way, we get that same kind of textural effect that just adds a little bit more style. Um, I could combine them, but I think that would be too much. So uh, I'm happy with this. So that is going to be it. Again, I would love to see you guys post your own spins on this visual style in the image gallery below.